Good morning. Today's topic is on epidemiology. Learning outcomes. Define epidemiology. List the aims, principles and purpose of epidemiology. List the requirements and uses of epidemiology. Distinguish between incidence and prevalence. Outline importance, important measurement tools. Then list important requisites of for measurements. Epidemiology. If you divide the word epidemiology into parts, you can get three parts. Like the first part is epi, which means upon. The second part is demo, which means people. Then the last part, logi, which means study. So epidemiology is nothing but upon people study. Yes, it's upon people study. So coming to the definition, epidemiology is it is a study of the distribution and determinants of health related states or events in a specified population and the application of this study to the control of health problem. This was given by John M. Lust. Here few things you have to remember like distribution, determinants of specified population, why you are finding these things like distribution and determinants to control the health problems. So if you remember three things, distribution, determinants among the specified population to control health problem. So when you are memorizing any definition, try to remember the keywords. Epidemiology is the basic science of preventive and social medicine. It has evolved rapidly during the past three decades. The modern epidemiology has entered the most exciting phase of its evaluation by identifying the risk factors of chronic diseases, evaluating the treatment modalities and health services. I think you will be knowing what is ident uh, risk factors. For example, uh, for dental caries, what will be the risk factor? Maybe consumption of sweets, improper brushing, are any debilitating diseases so you have to identify the risk factors then only you can give prevention or treatment so this is the main aim of any epidemiology so prevention is the main aim but you have to find out the or identify the risk factors the current trends of epidemiology newer of shoots such as cancer epidemiology neuro epidemiology genetic epidemiology, occupational epidemiology, or psychosocial epidemiology. Coming to the history, first known epidemiologist is Hippocrates. First to tell, no disease is sent by evils and demons, but is the result of natural causes. Consistent relationship between the habit, physic, weather, and disease. So he is considered as the first person, uh, the first epidemiologist. Founder of epidemiology is Thomas Sinderham. He is a London physician, recognized as a founder of clinical medicine and epidemiology. He emphasized detailed observation of patient and accurate record keeping. That means if you are observing any patient or any population, you have to observe very carefully and you have to record the things accurately. John Snow is the father of epidemiology. He was the one who mapped the cholera cases in East London during cholera epidemic of 1854 traced source to single well on Broad Street that had been contaminated by sewage is responsible for cholera. Who is an epidemiologist? Any person who researches into occurrence of disease or disability in a group of population is called an epidemiologist. I will repeat, any person who researches into occurrence of disease or disability in groups of population 
he is called an epidemiologist qualification of of an epidemiologist like if you can use your common sense you can think over it like what might be the proper qualification of an epidemiologist first is familiar with the statistical techniques you should know some of the statistics then well grounded in diagnosis of disease so he must be an um, medicine background then the third is through with like history and observation or clinical observation relating to epidemics then good knowledge of bacteriology immunology and physiology then knowledge of principles of preventive medicine how you can remember this the best method is like in your first year you will be having anatomy physiology biochemistry so an epidemiologist should know all these three things then the second year pathology you should know all these things then your prevention part that is community so if he knows the basics with the community and the medicine so he will be a better epidemiologist epidemiologists need to know public health because of the emphasis on disease prevention clinical medicine because of emphasis on disease classification and diagnosis pathophysiology because of need to understand basic biological mechanism in disease statistics because of the need to quantify disease frequency and its relationship to antecedents social science because of the need to understand the social context which a disease occurs in the present coming to the aims of epidemiology to describe distribution and magnitude of health and disease problems in human populations to identify etiological factors in the pathogenesis of the disease to provide the data essential to planning implementation and evaluation of services for the prevention control and treatment of diseases and to the setting up of priorities among those services so the first aim is to describe distribution and magnitude of health then finding the etiological factor then after collecting the etiological factor then it's like collecting the data data essential for the planning so whatever data you have collected you have to give it to government so that government will plan a better healthcare delivery services the ultimate aim of epidemiology is to lead to effective action to eliminate or reduce the health problem or its consequences then to promote the health and well-being of society as a whole Coming to epidemiological approaches, the first is asking questions like what is the event, what is the magnitude, where did it happen, who are affected, why did it happen. Then you have to compare it, like making the comparison. What can be done to reduce this problem and its consequences? How can it be prevented in future? What action should be taken by the community, by the health services? by other sectors where and for whom this activity is carried out what resources are required how are the activities to be organized for example if you take the present scenario of covid-19 just compare the first country which affect is affected is china by the time malaysia was not affected and they were telling this disease is not spreading man to man like in the beginning the china newspaper including who were telling that this disease is not spreading man to man or human to human but later after one or two weeks they have, the same who people have reported yes it will be spreading from one country to another country or from human to human don't know to whom to believe so but in, in the epidemiological approach you have to search what can be done to reduce the problem and its consequences how it can be prevented what action should be taken what resources are required and what is the plan for the future the same things if it is reoccur 
so this is the important approach epidemiological approach versus clinical approach epidemiological coming to epidemiological approach it's focus on group but in clinics it's focus on individual for example any epidemiologist if he goes to uh, the area where covid 19 is affected then he will focus on the group of people but in clinics if the same covid patient if come to your clinic you will you will be focusing on the single person so epidemiologist will focus on larger group total number of cases distribution modes of spread this is this is the thing which epidemiologist epidemiologist will search but the same patient if he comes to clinic as a clinician we will check the signs symptoms causes treatment like that then in the epidemiological approach the most important is pre pathogenesis period for example covid 19 the pre pathogenesis period is for 5 days then starts like the fever will start then the respiratory attacks so like that but whatever if you want to prevent the disease you have to know the pre pathogenesis if you know, see most of the time you can prevent the hazardous effect of any disease in the pre pathogenic state if you treat them with the medication most probably we can achieve a good prognosis at the pre pathogenic period in the clinical approach pathogenic period is most important because when the signs and symptoms are already there then only patient will come to clinics so that time you should know pathogenic period so so the main difference is epidemiologist should know the pre pathogenic period come to epidemiological approach or clinical approach the the continuation of the previous slide in the epidemiological approach concerned with environment in detail epidemiologist will study the environment in detail but in the clinics concerned with the environment to a limited extent epidemiological approach investigator go to the community in search of suffering person but in the clinics patient will come to the clinics in the epidemiological approach the subject matter is conceptual can only be symbolized in the form of tables and graph for example the covid yes in the penang there are 35 patient uh, in the age group of 60 plus this many patient among them this many males this many females so you can give graphs and tables but in the clinical approach subject matter is easily pursued by the techniques as clinical lab examination like you can check this is the hemoglobin count this is the body temperature uh, this is the respiratory rate so these are the clinical signs but in the epidemiology you can only give the tables and graph of who is affected which area is affected geographical location like that come to scope of epidemiology it is also concerned with the study of general health status of human population in relation to the environment modern epidemiology concerns with not only the epidemic diseases but also communicable and non communicable disease namely the cancer heart diseases mental illness dental diseases congenital defects knowledge derived from the epidemiological studies is applied not only for the prevention of disease but also promotion of positive health recently epidemiologists have become involved in evaluating the effectiveness and efficiency of health services objectives of epidemiology to collect and analyze all data relating relating to the roles of agent host and environment to effectively describe the complete epidemiological situation then to analyze and describe the occurrence distribution and nature of disease according to the variables such as age gender occupation seasonal and secular periodicity of occurrence of places and habits customs mode of living which all together constitutes social and geographical pathology of disease
to probe into the role of causes at different stages where disease often are multi-causal and multi-phased to help the administrator to channel their public health policies to serve the various group of population, age, gender, occupation, rural or urban to meet the felt needs of these groups in society they serve. To help lay down priorities and targets to appraise their action and finally evaluate periodically to improve their social policy from time to time. Coming to the principles of epidemiology, the first and foremost principle is exact observation. You have to observe very carefully, then only you can guess what is the probability or what is the cause for this kind of any disease. Then the correct interpretation. Correct means accurate, that is free from error. Then the rationality of explanation. For example, cholera. See, uh, you found out that many people are affected. Then you have to find what is the source of this infection or the foci of infection. Then you have to relate, oh, if this is the foci, then what are the symptoms occurs from this? For example, if a person or people are uh, water from the same well are affected, then that is the foci. The well is the foci. After consuming, what all things are happening like diarrhea, fever, stretching. So that things you have to explain sensibly. Then scientific construction by expert knowledge and technical skill. So this is the cause of this. So we have to provide this kind of treatment. So we will cure this many people in this many days and isolation or quarantine. So like that you have to plan scientifically. to the branches there are many branches general specific experimental field clinical global evaluating forecasting the all of these things will come under epidemiology strategy of epidemiology in order to deal with multiple problem macmahon and po summarize the strategies of epidemiology like descriptive epidemiology formulation of hypotheses, analytical epidemiology, then experimental epidemiology. Coming to epidemiological triad, here you can see three things. First is environment, then agent, then host. So epidemiological triad, triad means three things, environment, agent, host. Coming to agent factor, the disease agent is defined as a substance living or non-living or a force tangible or intangible, the excessive presence or relative lack of which may initiate or perpetuate a disease process. For example, dental caries, it may be caused from bacteria, so agent is bacteria. Classification of disease agents like biological agent, nutritive agent, physical agent, chemical agent. For example, biological agent means bacteria, nutrient agent means many people are suffering from diet insufficiency or malnutrition. So, nutrient is an agent for a disease. Then, physical agent like without the proper exercise, people are gaining weight, which leads to diabetes or uh, like immovability leads to some other diseases. So chemical agent, for example, if you are consuming or inhaling mercury, so you will be knowing what are the adverse effect of mercury or smoking, carcinogenesis effect. So these are the disease agents. Absence or insufficiency or excess of factor necessary to health, like chemical factors, nutrient factors, lack of part of structure, immunological factors, then social agents. 
turn to host factors demographic characteristics like age gender ethnicity like whatever the research you are doing first you will record the demographic details like age gender ethnicity the location their uh, like in your case history the first part then the biological characteristics like genetic factors biochemical levels of blood immunological factors and physiological function of different organ system of the body then comes the social and economical characteristics like social economic status education occupation stress marital status living habits nutrition etc so these are intrinsic factors or host factors Come to environmental factors. These are extrinsic. The previous one, the host factor, are intrinsic. This is the environmental factor. This is extrinsic. Definitions: external or macro environment is defined as all that which is external to the individual human host, living and non-living, and with which he is in constant interaction. Come to the classification: physical environment. That is. the non living things and the physical factors example air water soil housing climate geography heat light noise with which man is constant interaction biological environment universe of living thing surrounding man including man himself some of them act as a disease producing agents reservoirs for infection intermediate host and vectors of disease psychosocial environment is defined as those factors affecting a personal health health care and community well being that stem from psychological makeup of individual and structure and function of social groups they include cultural values customs habits belief attitude morals religion education lifestyle community life health services social and political organization also part of social environment is the people components of epidemiology the first one is disease frequency frequency of disease disability or death summarized as a rates of ratio prevalence rate incident rates and death rate it also concerned with the health related states or events in the community example health needs demands activities health care utilization the next one is the distribution of disease refers to the sequences places of occurrence and person affected that is time place and person this is very important in descriptive epidemiology then determinants of the disease like physical biological and behavioral factors that can influence the health terminologies like what is variate variate means any piece of information referring to the patient or his disease variates are two types namely the discrete and continuous the first one is discrete which means present or absent only two options present or absent that is dichotomous continuous means it will be like there is no fraction here it will be continuous like bp it may be 120 by 80 or sometime 130 by 8 depending on the age and the person then serum cholesterol your height some people will have 172 cm some will be 184 like that it will be continuous number there won't be a fraction but in the discrete uh, there will be a fraction in the continuous but in the discrete there will be all or none like present or absent circumstances any factor in the environment that might be suspected of causing disease for example respiratory problem which may be caused from the air pollution coming to the tools of measurement rate ratio proportion this is very important coming to the rate 
rate is the frequency of disease or characteristics expressed per unit of size of the population or groups in which it is observed. A rate measures the occurrence of some particular event that is development of disease or occurrence of death in the population during a given time period. It is the statement of the risk of developing a condition. Coming to the rates, rate comprises of the following elements like the numerator, the denominator, and the time specification and a multiplier. The time dimension is usually calendar year. The rate is expressed, expressed per thousand or some other round figures selected according to the convenience or convection to avoid fractions. Concepts of numerator and denominator. Coming to the numerator, numerator refers to the number of times an event, for example, sickness, birth, death has occurred in the population during a specified time period. The numerator is the component of denominator in calculating the rate, but not in the ratio. This is the major difference. If you are calculating the rate, then the numerator is the component of denominator. But when you are calculating the ratio, this is not the case. Like numerator is may not be the component of denominator. Coming to the denominator, numerator has a little meaning unless it is related to a denominator. The epidemiologist has to choose an appropriate denominator while calculating the rate. Rate means it should have both numerator and denominator and it should be related one. I will explain you like how it should be related. Come to the related to the population like mid-year population, population at risk, person time, person distance, subgroups of the population. Then related to the total events, for example, infant mortality rate, case fatality rate, or number of accidents per thousand vehicles. Various categories of rates, for example, crude rates. This is the actual observed rates such as birth rate and death rates, also known as an unstandardized rates. That means there is no standard. Coming to the specific rates, these are actual observed rates due to specific causes, example, tuberculosis, are occurring, occurring in specific groups, example, age, gender, are during specific time, like annual, monthly, or weekly. Then standardized rates. These are obtained by direct or indirect method of standardization or adjustment. Example, age, gender, standardized rates. For example, death, number of death in one year into 1000 divided by mid-year population. So then here, that for, to calculate the death rate, we have the numerator number of death in one year. Then the denominator is mid-year population. The multiplier is 1000. So coming to the crude rates, if I tell the death rate of Malaysia is 60%, this is nothing but the crude method of telling anything. I am not specifying which age group or uh, which gender or which, pop, uh, which location. A particular location. I am telling the whole. That means I am telling the crude, crude values. Coming to specific, if I tell the caries prevalence is 60% in age group of five school going children. So I am specifying the age group. That is nothing but specific rates. Coming to standardized rates, that means I am comparing with some standard one or I am adjusting that one. For example, number of death in one year into 1000 divided by mid-year population. So I am standardizing to like per thousand how many people are dying. This is the example of risk rate. In the study of diabetics, 100 of the 189 diabetic men died during 13 year follow-up period. 
calculate the risk of death of this man that is the death rate in the numerator it will be like 100 death among the diabetic men in the denominator there will be like 189 diabetic men so the risk is 100 by 189 that is numerator 100 denominator 189 into the multiplier that is 100 it's 52.9 so the risk of the death or the risk rate is 52.9 percent coming to the ratio ratio expresses relationship in size between two random quantities the numerator is not the component of denominator the numerator and denominator may involve an interval of time or may be instantaneous in time broadly ratio is the result of dividing one quantity by another and is expressed as x is to y or x by y example number of children with scabies at certain time number of children with malnutrition at certain time the second example for the ratio deliveries infant mortality rate in 2001 was 10.7 per thousand live birth in new hampshire infant mortality rate in 2001 was 3.1 3.8 per thousand live birth then calculate the ratio of infant mortality rate in deliver to the to that in the new hampshire so the numerator will be delivers that is 10.7 divided by the de denominator that is new hampshire's that is 3.8 into 1 so it will give like 2.8 is to 1 so in the conclusion you can write diverse infant mortality rate was 2.8 times as high as new hampshire infant mortality rate in 2001 coming to the proportion a proportion is a ratio which indicates the relation in magnitude of a part of whole the numerator is always included in the denominator proportion is usually expressed as a percentage so here the multiplier is always 100 so example number of children with scabies at certain time divided by total number of children in the village at the same time into 100 this is example of calculating proportion calculate the proportion of men in nhans follow-up study who were diabetics for example numerator 189 diabetic diabetic men denominator mm, the total of men is uh, around 3340 the proportion is like the numerator the 189 the denominator the total persons so it's like 5.66 percent among the men were affected with diabetes so these are some of the examples of this so you have to uh, read some of the articles and your next assignment is to write two two example for rate ratio and proportions thank you